Malicite is the sophomore full-length album from Molten, a San Francisco, California-based death-thrashing heavy metal band. And I would say that because ultimately uh, the sort of canonical fortitudes that hold up between the uh, advent of speed metal into thrash metal, the death thrash metal that came after it, and the sort of progressive metal that might have melded in with all of those things in the Bay Area canon of heavy metal over the last 40 years all kind of arrive into the spirit of what Molten is doing. And they they sort of connect uh, progressive metal tendencies and nothing too outright, but there's a finesse to what they do that makes them a better death thrash metal band and also makes them a better heavy metal band. All of it comes down to traditional heavy metal bones, but they are very much, uh, the, the sort of facade, the face of the band is, is more death metal with the, the growled vocals and whatnot. So, uh, they, they, you know, we, I talked about their 2021 record dystopian syndrome before in a very similar way saying it's something from the era of something like seven churches or insanity's first record where that, uh, 1985 to 1993 feeling of Bay area, heavy metal, all kind of conglomerates into the personality of this band and they do well to keep it uh energetic and uh unpredictable and that they're not writing such traditional heavy metal songs but when you do look at it on paper that is what they're coming up with in spirit and uh we'll cut to a song here just to give a sense of how all those sounds combine together and how that how it why it works so well <laughs> I think my biggest concern in liking all of their style and in seeing substance in their first full length back in 2021 was that I was afraid it was maybe a band that wasn't going to have a lot of charisma or personality in the long run uh, if nothing ever really changed from that setup. It was a really effective record. It was uh, a lot of memorable songs. You could tell they were talented folks, a lot of push behind the record, but this record the second album does well to improve upon every aspect of that first one while also iterating a little bit in uh, what it did best. And what I mean is that when they go for a quick burner of a song, they make sure every note counts. When they go for a 10 minute song, they make sure every movement counts. And uh, overall, you can tell that they put a lot of care and time into making sure this record really made a, a dent in every listener. Now, that means the, the vocals have become a little bit more intense in their death metal growl, but there's still plenty of reverb and space occupied by their roar, you know, and I think that's representative of a good live band who understands that the presence of the vocalist is sort of, uh, that should be the leading uh, leader in the ship, but there's still plenty of room for the guitars to cut through, and that's kind of where they shine the most. I really appreciated that the bassist and his guitar, his bass guitar tone really stands out. It's very strong, and it's uh, not exactly fully virtuosic, but he's, he's very um, exaggerative and performative playing off what the two rhythm guitars are doing, and it makes the rhythms uh, really count for this record. And again, whether the song is two minutes or ten, there's... Um, always some activity going on there that's thrilling and actually a lot of fun to listen to uh and i really like to see some of these live just because of the way that these i'd like to see how the band pulls a lot of this off and keeps the energy up because this record feels like a shot of adrenaline a lot of the time it's a lot of the things i love about thrash and traditional heavy metal uh, in performance but then there's the death metal coating there where i call it like a death metal metal church or uh, something like that along the way and i think it's because you, you feel that spirit of uh, thrash and heavy metal and uh, also the extremity of it too this carries on through the full record there are of course side b is going to stand out for everyone i think those are the more uh, idea rich ideas they're more dense with uh, just more everything and uh, they're a little bit more performative and illustrative of uh, what they're trying to get across so I describe a lot of that in the review you could cut into that if you want it's kind of a long review this time the important thing is that the the opener really does its job to keep that momentum up in side a the the density of side b really is the brain of the operation and it kept me coming back for those songs because they were so uh, big and expressive and full of you know everything from neoclassical style shredding and and whatnot that it's kind of everything that 
anyone well, anyone who's like a long-term fan of 80s 90s and now heavy metal will like you know what everything that they're doing pair that with great aesthetic design and we have a real heavy metal record that checks all the boxes in that sense you know that from the lyrics uh to the uh, the imagery which is is kind of insane uh this is a really well-made record and one that is not just uh curated in its aesthetics but curated as an experience that is just it's pretty great uh again one of the better records of march it gets a, a what i would say right on the on the teetering edge of a very high recommendation certainly a high recommendation i think there's a lot of uh crossover appeal for a lot of people who are interested in thrash metal but also uh, traditional heavy metal and death metal uh, there's it just naturally fuses a lot of those things and it creates something pretty viable and memorable from it so check that out if that's to your taste this releases this friday on march 8th and uh, read the review there's plenty more thoughts there to catch on if you'd like more information <laughs> 